Some weeks ago, I was speaking Shabbat in a synagogue in Shul in Toronto. And I wasn't wearing a watch. I wanted to time my talk. So somebody handed me a watch. It was a digital watch. Now, I would submit that if there's anything that symbolizes the generation in which we live, it's the digital watch. Because the chronogram watch is in the context of the past hour and the future hour. The digital watch only has now this moment. Our MC, right, a refugee from Cambridge, <laughs> was given shelter and awesome air. We'll be familiar, as some of the others here might be, with a British essayist, Chesterton, who once said that he believes in a democracy of the dead. Just because somebody died, he should not be deprived of a vote. However he lived, that was his vote. And if we look at the world, he said it in jest, somewhat whimsy, but there was a kernel of truth there. There's a way of looking at the world in context. And there's a world that begins now. And it has nothing to do with anything that's happened till now. I would submit that merely from a psychological point of view, it's really not accurate to deny the context of who your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents are, were, and, as the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre in his book on anti-Semitism writes, how the world looks at you, how you are viewed. Sartre makes the point that the assimilating Jew has to expend an energy that the non-Jew does not have to expend because the world invariably is looking at him as a Jew. And so, we would make the case, if you add to that the rather extraordinary history of the Jews, it's unique. Everybody agrees that, with that. The question is, so what? So it's unique. How many gallons of unique can I put into my tank to get me where I want to go? But add to that that it was anticipated, this uniqueness. Does that then prove? I would say it's evidence that it moves from possibility to probability that we're on to something here that goes beyond mere happenstance and accident. And therefore, if you guys made it here to Yerushalayim, we're still Tuesday, relates to the past week's Torah reading, where there's a line, they shall dwell a separate people. And it's understood by some of the commentaries to mean that's going to be a fact. Take it as a privilege or it will be visited upon you as persecution. How many years did the Jews have a golden age in Spain? How many years did they live in Lithuania? Germany? other countries, and yet there comes a point 
where the Jew is on the verge of disappearance, that somehow there's a trauma, a shock, that reminds him. But it's not merely negative, because it's a privilege. Why is it a privilege? Because if you work from the premise that we have a mission statement of something to give and say to the world, what are the clues that this might be true? Clues sprinkled through the detective novel of God's authorship of the whodunit of creation. Sprinkled here and there. What percentage of Nobel Prize winners have been Jews? One fourth. One fourth. What percentage of the world population are Jews? Is that peculiar? Is that unique? Again, my guess is that that's a clue that we've been endowed with a certain kind of overdrive to accelerate on the turnpike of history. And so, we come to Yerushalayim. Early on, it was predicted that whenever we come back here, after having been here, gone out, come back, it's going to be contentious. Fellas, please, somebody tell me, what's the difference between a corporation and the UN? A corporation is what? Okay. Good. Say it louder. Corporations usually like Jews and you want to hate Jews. <laughs> a corporation is unlimited or limited liability. Which? Limited liability. That's the whole point of a corporation. So a corporation is limited liability. I would submit that UN stands for unlimited lie ability. <laughs> Strange. But that strangeness was again anticipated. Perhaps on some level of our existence we connect to some message. That's our point. Western Union has pretty much become defunct since the world of email. But you remember the world of telegrams, Western Union? OK, there was such a world where you wanted to send a message quickly. You sent it with a telegram. It was after Morse code and before fax and before email. So the Hollywood mogul Sam Goldwyn was once challenged that his movies have no message. To which he replied, if I want to send a message, I use Western Union or email. The Jew says everything is a message. The fact that we are here. Make a quick calculation, fellas where your grandfathers were and your great-grandfathers were. And if somebody would have told them that this group is going to be together in Jerusalem in a Jewish state that is struggling and yet thriving, what were the odds? Again, we say it wasn't a question whether it would happen, it was a question when it would happen. And so it behooves all of us. You have an investment to make, a financial investment. What's the first step? You do due diligence. You're going to invest your lives, how you live when you wake up in the morning. 
with whom you're going to get married, what kind of home you want to have. Doesn't it sound reasonable to do some due diligence on that which the world says I am and that which the inner voice within me says I am? Doesn't it make sense to take some time and explore that in depth? I must admit, I want to play fair, you may like it. Be cautioned. Be careful. If you learn, it may speak to that Jew that's hiding out deep down within your soul. Welcome to Yerushalayim. Enjoy the learning, because learning is about enjoying. It's about touching something that speaks to me, to my life, connects me to my past, and gives me some reason to go forward to the future. Welcome.